Welcome back. I'm here with Adam Thuss from Portland, Oregon. However, he's sheltered in California due to the COVID. Adam, thanks very much for joining me. Hey, pleased to be here. Adam, tell us about your connection with Stratford. Uh, so I um, grew up in Stratford. We moved uh, as a family in grade two. So from grade two through high school, uh, we lived in Stratford. My parents still live in Stratford. So pretty hometown connection for me. Perfect. And then you did your university, I think, mechanical engineering where? I did mechanical engineering at Waterloo. So not that far away from home. So University of Waterloo, and you're working for a large company I think most people have heard of is Nike. What do you do for them? So I'm a computational designer at Nike, and I get to uh, be in the innovation kitchen. So we kind of are the, the skunk works, as they call it, but um, kind of the very small niche and forward wing of Nike research. Perfect. Well, very topical right now is the uh, Tokyo Olympics. How, what's the connection there and what can you tell us? Yeah, so I started at Nike 2014 and uh, I was kind of brought in just before the Rio Olympics. So this will actually be my second Olympic cycle. And my main job is doing an Olympic product for our athletes. And that's mostly in track and field. So uh, Tokyo Olympics is a big one for us. We put a, a big chunk of kind of new track and field product and really hoping that Tokyo goes ahead um, because we'll get to see that stuff and see it kind of in its final form in, in the colors and the kind of final product. The other thing I think they use the term algorithmic or algorithm based performance, English. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, it's kind of neat. Um, tr traditionally, footwear design is like uh, pretty artistic, lots of sketching. Um, and that happens to do with kind of like how many people wear footwear. So you have to kind of design for a lot of people. Um, and kind of what our kind of small group is doing is taking very specific athletes. So this is kind of why we get to work with Olympic athletes. And what we get to do is kind of take them and run them through kind of all of our sports research. And what we get from them is a, like a very personalized kind of uh, set of needs. And then what we do with that is kind of design kind of a algorithm set to create a shoe for them and kind of create a shoe for them, not just in one point of the season, but as they progress in the season, and also each individual athlete kind of would get a shoe that's created for them. And we're not sitting down and sketching each individual shoe. We kind of create this algorithm set and then we kind of run each athlete through that and they get their individual shoe that's kind of produced through this algorithm. So do you get to follow a specific Olympic athlete? Yeah, um, it kind of depends on, on the Olympic cycle, but usually we start one project with one specific athlete. So um, my first project was Allison Felix. So we worked with her and we, we traveled around the globe kind of to meet her in a bunch of different training areas and kind of run her through kind of our diagnostic to say like, what are your needs now? Um, and then as we get more familiar with the product and the athlete, we start to kind of broaden that to say, okay, now we've kind of figured this set out. Then we started working with like national teams or kind of top 10 athletes in, in the world championships. And then it kind of slowly gets out to like high school athletes as like a broader range. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really cool. Okay, I've Googled Adam Thus and then patents, and you've co-patented literally dozens. Do you know how many you actually have your name on? I, th I think it's 15, maybe. And it's kind of funny because the timing cycle of patents is you sign them and send them away, and then, you know, a couple of years later, they come out into kind of like public domain. Um, so there's a number still in, in kind of like the mid-stage. But yeah, it's kind of neat. We um, the teams I get to work with are, are really quite sharp and we do lots of different things and we lots of stuff doesn't end up in the market, but so it kind of ends up in patents. So it's quite cool to look at that patent set and be like, wow, this is, this is pretty neat. Now you mentioned the word kitchen and this, is this this performance lab? What do you do kind of day to day? Yeah. So uh, it's kind of neat that this is like an old school term, the kitchen, the innovation kitchen, but it's our um, innovation wing of Nike. So it's kind of neat. It's, um, a number of different kind of functionalities in one area. And so the sports research lab is biomechanics, physiology, athlete services. So really sport focused. And then there's a materials kind of group that is working on new materials and working on things like kind of forward down the line. And then we're the designers and we kind of take all that information together. So that's kind of day to day. It's working with all these different functions and saying what's new, what's happening in different industries, what is the athlete needing? And 
kind of how do we incorporate that into a final product that they can run in. Right. And have you ever counted the amount of shoes that are in your own closet? <laughs> uh, it's funny. I'm not, I'm not a huge shoe, shoe head or kind of sneaker head as they call it, but I, I mean, with test pairs and uh, things that we're testing out, it, it's probably pretty close to 50, which is like, maybe not crazy, but I have coworkers that it's much, much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, thanks very much for joining me. I'm glad we didn't have to quarantine you for two weeks so we could do this actually from California via Zoom. Thanks, Adam. Totally. Thanks for having me.